Great. Okay. Uh, good evening or good morning, wherever you are in the world. I am Sasha Allsberg. Oh, wait. Do I do my own? Oh, I go like that. Okay. Um, I'm <laughs> Sasha Allsberg. I forgot to press, like, my button. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Um, amazing so far. I know. We're just doing so well. Um, we are here for um, the Pixel Project, Read for Pixels. And through Read for Pixels, um, the Pixel Project is collaborating with 11 award-winning, best-selling authors to raise awareness about violence against women and to raise funds toward the celebrity male role model Pixel Reveal campaign, which aims to raise $1 million to be shared between the U.S. National uh, Coalition Against Domestic Violence and the Pixel Project to keep their efforts to end violence against women and kicking, um, live and kicking. Uh, we'll be telling you more about the Reefer Pixels fundraiser, which has a lot, um, which has lots and lots of exclusive author goodies, and a little later in this session. And you can find out about the Pixel Project. Uh, just visit thepixelproject.net. Um, so today we have a very special treat for you. We have a live uh, discussion and Q&A session with New York Times bestselling author Sarah J. Moss, who wrote the Throne of Glass series. So Sarah has uh, generously signed a set of her Throne of Glass uh, series, including the latest book, Air of Fire, as well as one-to-one -one Skype chat um, session of author goodies and perks about Read for Pixels and a tons of other goodies that you should go check out, which we'll be linking down below. Okay, so hi, Sarah. Thank you for being here today for the Pixel Project. What's up? Woo! Oh, I, like, are people watching this? Like, is it just, like, you and me? Like, I'm oh, so... we have 17 viewers, actually, already. So that's pretty good. We're, we're yes. so popular. I'm going to get real weird up in here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, such a long intro. Oh, my gosh. But, guys, Read for Pixels is such an amazing organization that really just stands up against violence against women and really just should compel anybody in action. This is such an amazing organization that everybody should be a part of. So, um, we're going to first start off with the discussion section of this live show where we're going to talk to Sarah about, um, ask her questions about women and her books and about books in general, and it'll be lots of fun. So we're just going to jump right in. Are you ready, Sarah? Oh, I'm like nervous. Like, what questions <laughs> are you going to ask me? Oh my gosh. This is, they're very difficult questions that are at least a page <laughs> on. Okay. <laughs> these are, they're actually really fun. I wrote some of these questions. So I actually wrote them during class, and I'm like, ooh, what do I want to ask Sarah? Ooh, I have a lot of things. You're, uh, you're like the level of student that I was, where I was like, I oh, could pay attention. Oh. I know. I like pay attention that I'm like multitasking, mostly during psychology because I'm like, uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> I took a Virginia Woolf seminar in college, and I literally would print out chapters of Throne of Glass and bring <laughs> with me to class. This was a class with eight people. Like oh eight my gosh. People, and I would sit there like, like hand editing my my. Oh, that's own great. Chapters. And oh my gosh. Like, I, like Virginia Woolf and I, I liked like two books, and I was like, mm, not for me. No. <laughs> no. So no. Great, though. Like yeah. my class, like it only has like ten to fifteen people in it, so I'm always like careful. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do work, and go back and forth. <laughs> okay, so um, the first question I'm going to ask you: Are you ready? This is like the final move. <laughs> um, okay, how would Selena uh, react to violence against women, and how would she prevent it? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, there's actually a novella um, called The Assassin and the Healer that kind of deals with, like, Selena directly confronting violence against women. Um, it's a hot-button issue for this girl. Um, yeah, that novella collection, um, which I don't even have, like, I'm, like, at my in-law's house right now, which is why there are bookshelves with no books on them. Oh, just, my God. <laughs> so I was, like, look at the, like, I was, like, look at how intellectual I look in my, like, oh. Study that's not really mine, but oh my gosh, there are no books. If this was my house, there would be ten million books, um, along with copies of my own. Um, books. Yeah, <laughs> it's like weird to be in here. I'm like, where are the books? It's yeah, it's like any books. Like this is a very sad study. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so in this novella, Selena actually um, meets this young healer who is in a pretty um, helpless situation in life and uh, saves her from a tough situation where these men attack her, um, and Selena, like, goes apeshit. Am I allowed to, like, curse in this chat? Like, can I say apeshit? I think so. I um, think we're all grown-ups here, not a grown-up, so, like... If you're a child, yeah. like, you shouldn't be up this late anyway, so... I know, it's like, it's like 8.30. <laughs> it's past your bedtime. Oh, if cursing is no, like a no-no, then you're up too late anyway. Um, oh. <laughs> sorry, kids. Um, 
This is why I write for teens, not for young. I know, right? So you can swear in the books and nobody will care. They yeah. actually think it'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, so Selena, uh, it's definitely a hot button issue for her. Um, and usually, if she sees some, like anyone, not just like women, but like anyone treating someone un unfairly and, and you know being violent towards them, um, her instinct is usually to protect them. Um, which I think is a part of why I I love her. She's more likely to help someone else than to help herself. Um, and what was the other part of your question? How would Selena react to violence against women? And uh, yeah, and then uh, I got to log in. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this phone. Um, and uh, how would she prevent it? Like, what would she do to prevent mm -hmm. all these heinous acts being committed? All right. Well, this is, uh, the answer to that's kind of spoilery. Um, if you've read like *Air of Fire*, you kind of know what course Selena is on with her fate. Um, if you read *Crown of Midnight*, like you kind of know who she really is. At the yeah, very yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're so, at the end of that. In fulfilling her destiny in future books, um, sh dealing with, you know, violence against women, violence against children, those things, because uh, she lives in a, a really brutal empire. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, once she fulfills her destiny to become a certain someone, um, she will actually, like, be facing those issues and taking them on. Um, so it's so spoilery for me to, like, say anything about it. I know. Um, oh, my gosh. Just the spoilers. Let's just, let's just say, like, I know. not allow it to happen. I and, know, and it's like you really want to say it, but you're like, oh, I don't want to spoil people who have not read the book, but you really want to say it. Yeah, and, like, this is stuff that, like, will happen in, like, book, like, like, like the later books, like, five and six, and, like, <gasps> if I write, like, a spin-off series, like, beyond, oh my God. it'll be, like, a whole thing. You'll just um, have to come back and do this again so you can spoil as much as you want. <laughs> No, ask me that question in, like, three years, and then... Yeah, like, and well, then you'll give the answer. It'll be totally fine. Just have to wait a few years. <laughs> okay, so the second question is, Selena um, is a resilient and strong character. How can girls in this day and age incorporate some of Selena's characteristics in their everyday lives? Um, well, you know, Selena is a hardcore badass. She oh, my God, that, yeah. I think, for me, her strength's always been um, that she's a survivor, uh, mm -hmm. She has seen some of the worst things that a person can see, and she's, you know, managed to pick herself up again and again. So if, if young women, you know, or women in general take anything away from her, I hope it's that they take this idea that, you know, it's not really... There's a saying that I love that I think kind of embodies Selena. It's, um, God, I'm blanking on the dude who, like, originally said it, of course. Mm -hmm. I just had dinner, so, like, I'm in, like, a food coma. My husband made me... Like, I want dinner right now. Oh my god, he made me like this most like the most beautiful rainbow trout. Like I'm like my body is just like so happy. Oh, so good. Anyway, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is um, it's not about how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get knocked. It's how many times you get back up, which I think Selena. So there's a phrase in the series where it's like literally like get up. Yeah. Is, like motto at times. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I would like, I would love it if like you know that. If Selena's survivalist tendencies, if her ability to get back up um, inspires someone else. I actually just got an email from a reader, um, a male reader, um, believe it or not, who was in an abusive relationship, and he said that he was in this really horrible cycle, and reading my books um, inspired him to stop that cycle of abuse and to get out of his relationship. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and like it like made him realize like his own self worth and like that he was worthy of being like loved and treated right. I read the email. I was like I was like I'm not emotionally prepared for this. Like, oh this my god, I would cry if I read that email. Like, like I like I just was like I want to like be your friend and like hug you and like yeah, your. I hug you like virtually, give you a big hug. Yeah. So like that kind like that is like it's just hearing that that made a difference for one person, mm. uh, male or female that was in a, a cycle of violence and abuse like that. Um, that's huge. Like that's like Absolutely. I could not have come at a better time. Like I literally got this email like yesterday. Really? Was, yeah. Oh my god! I was like, so holy shit! Like I'm now yeah. doing this chat about you know ending violence against women. Like weird. That's such a coincidence. Like no joke. That's so cool. Yeah. Like the universe works in very strange ways. Oh my! Such strange ways. Like it's literally magic. Just saying. I I honestly think there's, like, some kind of weird magic system in the universe where, like, it's like, you know that thing where, like, you think about someone and then they call you literally two seconds later? That happened to me yesterday. Yeah. Literally yesterday or the day before. It was so weird. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Like, it's and that always happens to me. Like, weird things like that. So there's totally magic. Like, that's oh, magic. 
Oh yeah, some type of magic out there. Who knows what it is, but it's it's there. <laughs> okay, so question number three. It's like school questions. <laughs> so, um, so as a storyteller, what is your definition of a strong female character? Some people say um, will say a female um, a female is strong if she is literally strong and can go around beating people up, <laughs> Selena. Um, yet still um, has no agency in the story or or is one-dimensional. Uh, do you think it is important for authors uh, to include strong female characters in their novels? And have you deliberately created female characters that ca um, can be considered strong? I'll be reading over the questions that were in this just to tell you because that's a long question, but just to refresh your mind, the first question was, as a storyteller, what is your definition of a strong female character? Um, honestly, I think the idea, like the term, like strong female character, has come to embody something different than what I kind of believe a strong female character is. You hear strong female character, and you think like she's going to be like Xena, like you know, yeah. like a warrior who can yeah. physically beat someone up. But for me, the heroines that have been the strongest are the ones that might not have the physical capabilities, and their like, their strength comes from inside of them. And Selena, I think Selena again is a, a strong character not because of her physical strength but because of her emotional strength. Mental, yeah. Because she's a survivor, because she's a loyal friend. Like those are things that I consider to be strengths. Um, and so I think when we use when people say they want more strong female characters, it's that they want, you know, more strong like literally like strong like yeah. characterization of women. Like women that, you know, aren't just one type, um, that don't fit into one like little box. Um, one of my favorite examples of um, you know a cast of strong female characters is actually from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, yes! Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, Buffy was a show. I watched Buffy as it aired, like, for the first time. I was, like, 12 or 13. Yeah. Um, I watched it with my mom. Um, we were so into the show. Um, and, like, Buffy was a show where you had... Um, if you guys don't know what Buffy is, like, you shouldn't be here. Yeah, Buffy is live. <laughs> it's on YouTube, so you have no... You have no choice to watch it or not because it's very accessible to anybody. <laughs> yeah, and like Buffy was okay. Buffy was kind of, I think what we've come to expect from strong, like the typical strong female character. But she's even more than that. I mean, Buffy was um, very girl, like girly in a way that I think yeah. sometimes like you know the badass heroines aren't allowed to be. She was a cheerleader and the slayer. She didn't fit nicely into either box, um, and sometimes her feminine side helped her. Um, save the world. But in, in Buffy, there were all different types of strong women. You had Willow, who was a very, like, almost painfully shy dork. Um, but, like, Willow's strength came from, like, her kindness, her loyalty to her friends. Um, she later found actual power as a witch. Um, yeah. And, I mean, there were all, di like, and then there were many, many different types of, like, female strength on that show. You had uh, Buffy's mom, I think, is one of the unsung heroes yeah. of Buffy. Um, single mom, raising Buffy all alone, having to deal with the fact that her daughter is the Slayer. Yeah. Um, so I think just, you know, that, you know, my, my definition of a strong, strong heroine isn't confined to the physical abilities. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think it's okay for heroines to start off weak and become strong. Oh, oh yeah, and then grow, and character growth, and just emotional growth. Yeah. That's the best character, that's the best type of person, like how they grow as a person. And some of the strongest women I've ever met have been, like, you know, some of the most shy and quiet people, um, but they have that inner strength. Um, yeah. So I would love, I'd, I'd love to see even more of that and, you know, see more different types of women represented oh. in, like, media. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of what, what's out there that's, like, like, Grey's Anatomy, I feel like, has a lot of different types of women. That, like, yes. I mean, like, obviously they're all, like, super gorgeous and, like, perfect. Um, which is an issue in itself, but like Grey's Anatomy is like tons of different types of women. I'm trying to think of like other like ensemble casts that have like good examples, but oh, oh, that that's a, like there's a lot of strong female characters out there nowadays because I feel like there's this whole new wave of shows that really show how powerful a female could be. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to think of one well, like Teen Wolf. I mean, Teen Wolf. Yes. Like, I mean, like there could be more girls on that show. I would love it if there were more girls. Um. But, like, you've got Allison and Lydia, who Allison um, is a really interesting, like, twist on, like, the, the trope of, like, you know, the love interest, where she develops her own, like, kick-ass strength. Um, and then you've got Lydia, whose strength is, I think, like, one, she's able to just kind of conceal a lot of her pain and just internalizes it. Um, 
and maybe there's some issues with that, but she like it's her strength is her brain. Like Lydia is like a a genius, like yes. <laughs> a certified genius, um, who then has her like own supernatural powers on top of that. Uh, but like Lydia's though, I love that Lydia's kind of the one that they turn to, and like Lydia's always like the one who's like, you guys are idiots, like don't you pay attention in class? Yeah, she's and such a cool character. Yeah, and I love that they make it realistic in the sense that Lydia sometimes like downplays just how smart she is and kind of hides it. Um, oh yeah. Which is why, like, her arc with Styles is amazing, because he's the only one that sees how smart she is. Oh, um, my gosh. They need to be together already, I'm just saying. Oh, I know. Like, oh. Ultimate <laughs> tip. <laughs> Sorry. Let's just turn into, like, fangirling. We already I talked know. earlier about our love for Styles. I know. But, like, you audience members that we can't see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're such fangirls towards these characters. Like, I think it's, like, Dylan O'Brien... And Sam Hugan, who plays Jamie, like, on point. Um, and then, what, did we finish the question? Yeah, I think you answered all the questions. Um, so, number four is, uh, okay, I'm, I'm looking up in your book. Because I don't want to pronounce her name wrong, but is it Nefima? Nefima? Uh, like, Nefima, Nehima. Nehemia? Nehemia, that's how, I always thought that was, like, Nefima. I don't know why, but I, I love that name, but I feel bad for not being able to pronounce it, but, so, um, I picked, like, I chose names that were, like, really hard to pronounce. I literally have, like, knots in my hair. I'm sorry to everyone. I was like, what is my hair? Is this a piece of fish? No, it's just a knot, because I didn't Oh, my gosh. Trust me, my hair looks so bad. It's been up in a bun all day, but I just put it down, it's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> No, it looks good, actually. So, um, wait, where was I? Nephemia. No, but I like how you, um, in the back, there's, like, a description on, like, how do you pronounce these characters' names. Because more books need to have that in the back of them. I know. Well, That's mine are, like, really, like, bad, because, like, every name is, like, impossible to pronounce. Except for, like, Dorian. That's Dorian. Pretty yeah, that's, that's pretty, like, that's an easy name. My friend thought that, um, uh, Kale was Chol for the whole time. Her, her, she's like, I'm just gonna call him Chol. I'm like, okay, you do that. <laughs> I mean, like, I understand. I should have I should have just called him, like, Peter. No, oh my gosh, no, but I love the names. That's what really gives it, like, the amazing aspect of it, that there is, like, it makes it feel more, like, fantasy-like with these character names, and I love that about it. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, okay, so the next question, now that I know how to pronounce it, Nathemia, right? Nathemia, Nathemia. 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 Uh, you just told me, and I keep up with you. dare you? I know, I'm a horrible <laughs> person. Ugh. Oh my gosh. I was about to bring in a Jamie comment, but I don't think it would be appropriate for this chat. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next question is, um, strong female characters are very apparent in young adult literature. How does Selena and Nahemia um, differ from them, say, like Katniss Everdeen? Like, how are they different than other characters in young adult fiction? Or, no, not fiction, like literature. I don't, you know what? I'm not, like, a big fan of, like, saying, like, why a heroine is, like, different from yeah. from the other ones. Um, you know, I I feel like heroines like Katniss kind of paved the way for Selena. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, even yeah. the Hunger Games, like, like, I was actually writing Throne of Glass. I began writing Throne of Glass when I was 16, so I was yeah. Yeah. before Hunger Games ever came out. Uh, mm -hmm. But then Hunger Games was published before my book came out, and I think, you know, the reaction to Katniss and the way Katniss was embraced as a heroine kind of paved the way uh, for, um, you know, all these other interesting heroines to come along. Um, I mean, like, I still remember walking into Barnes & Noble when Catching Fire came out and seeing a giant you know? play, and I started crying, and the bookstore yeah. was like, why is finally being recognized? And I was oh, like, wow. look, at look at what Katniss is doing! Because um, I, like, until that point, like, the YA section had been, like, a... A, like a little sad shelf in like the back corner of the store. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then thanks to even, I mean even thanks to Twilight, um, like oh. the with YA became huge. Yeah. Uh, but Katniss was really the first time that I ever saw um, the like the obsession being about the heroine. I mean like the whole Team Katniss thing. You know, there's Team Gale, Team Peta. Yeah, yeah. And then I then saw a huge thing with team, team Katniss, where people, like, literally were saying, I do not care who she ends up with. This is her Oh, story. yeah. Um, I was Team Katniss. I remember that. I, I, like, made signs. Like, Team Katniss, when I was reading Mockingjay, like, it, it's really, like, she is the main character. She is awesome. And everybody should root for her. I was Team... I was actually Team Finnick. Um, oh, my gosh, yeah. Finnick... Oh, the last book killed me, though, so... I know. I literally... Okay, this, this, this is spoilery. Sorry if you haven't read Mockingjay. Yeah. 
Like, they have enough time to read it, so they should have read it. What happens to him? I was like, this is not... Like, I was like, how could you do this? Like, it's so not, like... Good. I was crying so much. I was like... I just, like, I read it, and I was like, wait, what? What did I just read? What just happened? Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't notice he... Um, what happened to him happened until I got to the next page, and I'm like, wait, shoot, did I just totally miss that? And then I thought I read it wrong, but I didn't, and that just, like, crushed my heart and my whole entire being. By, like, like, lizard men or something. Yeah, like, what the heck? Like, out of nowhere, I'm like, that's not cool. This, no. Oh, it was horrible. I just was so upset. So I, like, and I knew, like, Finnick was never, like, an option. Um, but, like, I, I actually did appreciate what Suzanne Collins did with Katniss where she, like, what happen, What happens with Katniss's sister, like, is kind of the breaking point for her relationship with Gail. Where, oh, like, yeah. I think I read something where Suzanne Collins said that she could never, Katniss could never have gotten back with Gail with, like, the the stain of what had been done to her sister and yeah. Gail's involvement in that. Um, and, like, that actually also kind of paved the way for me in some ways. It inspired me with the what happens in Crown of Midnight, um, where Selena loses someone very close to her, um, and there are real emotional consequences to that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think in some ways, like the like, there's, I mean, like like in any genre, there are different types of heroines. But I feel like in in young adult, we actually see a lot of like strong, interesting heroines because, you know, writing for teens, this is a time in in you know, our characters' lives as teenagers when they're figuring out who they are and what they want, and the act of finding out what they want and deciding who they want to be um, is a really powerful, interesting thing. Um, so I think, you know, the Selena and Nehemia are like, probably more alike other YA heroines. Um, I don't like putting down like other YA heroines. Yeah, uh, no. Oh, people that are smarter than them. Yeah. You're plenty of smart, like, interesting, cool heroines. Um, yeah. That's why they're heroines. They're all awesome in their own way and they're just all... Yeah, awesome. yeah. I'm just, I'm about them. Yeah, and I'm like I'm honored to be like published in a genre, okay. putting out so much interesting, cool fiction, a lot, and a lot of it for it's, it's all, like people still kind of just poo-poo, you know, stuff that that teenage girls love. Um, meanwhile, I think teenage girls are the coolest, and we run the world. Um, oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just uh, going to say that in 15 minutes, Sarah is going to be answering your guys' questions. We're just going to answer a few more discussion questions, one or two, and then we're going to jump right into the Twitter questions and the Q&A questions, which you can tell, ask her your questions on YouTube, and there's like a Q&A box somewhere that you can click on. I'm not, I do not know where it is, guys, so I apologize if you do not know where it is, but um, just make sure that you either submit your questions to the read for, um, to the uh, the Pixel Project hashtag, or go and ask them on YouTube. So keep that in mind. Okay, so <laughs> I, Regina was just like, remember to tell them that. I'm like, oh yeah. So okay, so we're gonna do. I keep on forgetting things because we're like fangirling over this stuff. <laughs> um, like I just got on Twitter and said hi to my friend Elena, who I hope is watching right now. She was. Um, he was like, you look so pretty. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. It's like, oh, thank like you. the knot in my hair, the like dirty unwashed knot. Oh my gosh, no, it looks pretty, your hair, I thought. I feel like I should give you $20 for saying such nice things about it. <laughs> oh. I, would, I would hand you life-size, like, real Jamie if I could. You know, I'm totally fine with that. Like, if you can make that happen, like, I I'll be here. I would die. I would actually, like, I, I wouldn't know what to say to him. Like, I, like, I would just look at him and, like, maybe, like, start, like, silently crying. I'm crying and be and, like, like, I'll be your Sassanac. <laughs> I know. Oh my! I, I just maybe like just like clothes. And be I sure. know. Just like start like peeling them off. Like just don't don't mind me. I'm just gonna. Like yeah. he must be like. I wonder if he's like overwhelmed with that now. I know. Like, I, like, I, I can't separate him from Jamie in my head. No, he's yeah. Scottish too. <laughs> like I was like, and like I was like, I don't care like who you are as a person. Like you you are Jamie. You are real life Jamie, and like I will be in love with you forever. I know it's. Oh, he's just so perfect. We have to have, like, a total different live show just talking about Outlander. Like, it'll be amazing. <laughs> awesome. Post-wedding discussion. I, yes. We would just, like, it'll be a, probably, like, a five-hour-long discussion of just how perfect it was. We'll only watch the, the wedding stuff and, like, slow-mo analyze every, like, look and, like, glance. Caress and, uh oh, This is going to happen. 
<laughs> okay, um, this is like one of my um favorite questions uh, that I have for you, and that is, do you think it's important for influential authors such as yourself who are, um, oops, that's there's a typo. Um, sorry, I just need to read off this. There's a typo, so you figure out where my this is going. Um, <laughs> such as yourself who read. Okay, okay. So do you? <laughs> This is like so. I do not think I spell check this. Um, do you think it's important for influential um, authors such as yourself, um, who read all over the world, to make um, a conscious effort to include characters, both female and male, in your stories that uh, show readers that the important importance of respecting women and equal as equals and as human beings. So, do you think that equality in books and as you as an author, if a very influential author, author, I cannot speak today. You hear how much I'm stuttering. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I'm like so out of it. I'm just like, ugh. I blame it on Jamie. Well, um, at least you look beautiful. Oh, you have that. you've got your looks. Oh my gosh, my unwashed hair too. Like, ugh. <laughs> I just look so bad. Um, but thank you. I think I should give you twenty dollars. <laughs> we can both give each other twenty dollars. Um, but do you think it's like important for um, authors to make characters both male and female equal? Oh yeah. And that's actually something that I've worked on in the Throne of Glass series. Um, and there's a, a new character in Throne of Glass, in um, Air of Fire. His name's Rowan. And he's <gasps> like Selena's match in every way. Um, and their relationship starts off like horrible. Like he's, yeah. he, he's awful to her. She's really awful to him. Um, they literally would be happy to kill each other at the beginning. Um, and then like not feel bad about it like ever. Um, but by the end of the book, they have this relationship where they are very much equals. Um, and, like, that, and having, like, that kind of equality, and even, um, like, with the other characters, um, like, having the, the men and women, like, see each other. <laughs> like, I don't even know who's calling. Like, <laughs> I'm like who are you? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, it's so random. Sorry. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, and we're back. <laughs> it's a brief commercial break. It's so weird. I'm so sorry. Uh, the Why? phone never rings in this house, so like every time the phone, like the landline rings, I'm like, yeah. what's the landline? I know, right? It's like, wait, do you have a home phone still? Like, I have a home phone, and I totally forgot about it, like about two years ago, until it started ringing recently. It's like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah. I haven't had a landline in like six years, and, like, at my in-laws' house, they have a landline, and, like, the phone rings, and I'm like, what, like, I'm like, what do I do? Like, I can't answer this. I, I like, don't know how to work a landline phone anymore. I think I, like, I accidentally, like, put somebody on speaker instead of, like, answering it, and it was just, like, it's really confusing. Ugh, so confusing. Sometimes I miss it, though. Like, I'm, like, when I was growing up, this was a long time ago, I had, like, it was such a big deal to get your own landline, yeah. like, in your room. So, like, I had my private, like, landline number that was just... Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Like, I love that. And sometimes I miss that. Like, I feel like I'm so addicted to my phone now in some ways. That it's it's just, like with my baby. It's always with yeah. me. Yeah. Did you, like, line up this morning to get that? Uh, no. I actually went to AT&T, and they had, like, about an hour, like, wait of a line. And then I went inside, and my dad decides to talk to the AT&T person for, like, 20 minutes. I'm like, I just want to get my phone. That's all I want, but it's okay. But, yeah, so I got it, and it, it was actually a very short line. And I went after school, which is very nice. So I'm like, whoo. That's nice. I my phone is dying, and I really die. Um, like literally dying. Like I can't even take a like if I take a photo, like the phone freezes. So yeah, oh, so, like, I'm overdue nice. for a phone. Uh, my phone freezes every time. Ugh. We are like literally not talking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> character quality. Character qualities. Our phones all night. That's exciting. I know, right? Um. But I know, like, with the, the first book, Throne of Glass, Lena actually kind of comes across a bunch of dudes who, um, you know, just because she's a woman, they see her as weak. Yeah. Um, and she really delights. I mean, like, this is a thing throughout the series, actually. Like, in the novellas, in the, the series itself, like, she delights in, like, she, like proving these men wrong. Um, and her closest bonds usually come from relationships where, like, you know, the, the men see her as an equal. Um, like, to the point where, like, there's a scene in Crown of Midnight um, where some dude says to Kale, oh, you know, she's just one girl, what can she do? Oh, um, yeah. Kale is just, like, he kind of, like, he's in, like, a, like, the worst, like, he's been, like, captured, he's in, like, a really bad situation, oh, but he's it, like, a little funny, and he laughs, and he's like, you're really in for a surprise. I love that part of the book. That was, like, my favorite part. Yeah, yeah, I love, like, I wrote that part, and I'm like, oh, snap, oh, snap. 
snap, Kale. Oh, yeah. Not for your friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, like Selena, like re like a real like if you want to like piss Selena off, like you can just call her a bitch. Like she hates oh, yeah. that word, like with a crazy passion. Um and yeah, so I I actually um I've I've made it a point to try and make like in like the relationships that matter the most to her to make the like equality stuff like oh yeah not like it like she like very rarely thinks like oh men and women being treated equal it's just like she connects with people that. Like you know, men and women that see each other as equals. Yeah, um, Nehemia was very much a person that was all for people's equality. You know. Oh it, yeah. You know, like, like, like all that stuff. Um. So yeah, I actually um I try and make that a point, uh, but it's something that she'll probably come up against as the series goes on, um, and she takes on a bigger and more important role in her world, um, coming across other cultures that don't see men and women as equals. You know, either. Women who look down at, on men, or you know, like like you know, it doesn't have to be one way or the other. Yeah. Um, but I think what's fun about you know what's been fun for me to write about Selena is just you know, when a dude calls her a bitch, and then yeah. she's like, let me tell you who you're calling bitch. Yeah, right? yeah. Let me show you. You'll mis You have greatly mistaken me for something I'm not. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I, don't think like, the I think like people kind of mistake feminism for like the idea that like that means that women want to like obliterate all men. And like put men like you know down. Oh yeah. Um, I really like. I believe that feminism is about equality and women being treated it is. equally, uh, mm -hmm. getting like equal pay. <laughs> Things yeah, like exactly. It's not about like yeah. putting men down. It's about making them equal. And I think that's really that's actually a really good point that you just brought up. Yeah. Um. And, I, and that's like a big like you know mistake people make about. Feminism. Okay. And, oh, I'm not a feminist, and it's like you know, like if if you're for like you know equality between men and women, you're you're a feminist. Yeah, I'm just let me break it to you. You're a feminist. Oh, you want equalness, like you're a feminist. That's actually <laughs> rhymed right there. Oh, that was awesome. Um, okay, so next question is, um, in your opinion, how can authors like yourself best support efforts to kick off social change to end violence against women? Oh wow. I yeah, know, right? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is, like, our books, I think, like, you know, we never want to be preachy with our books. Um, but, you know, I, honestly, like, there, there's the material in our books that is inspiring, you know, showing that girls can be equal and save the world. Um, but I think also just, like, authors doing, participating with ama amazing organizations like this, um, so, you know, talking about, issues like violence against women um, in places that won't alienate people um, like just like spreading the word and being open about it I mean like I still like my my I grew up in New York City so I became kind of immune to catcalling and all those horrible things um, but like I still like when I travel like I like I actually like I was just on tour for a month and yeah. every night in my hotel room like I would build a literal barricade against my door um, where I would drag over like the chair, the like, what do you call it? Like the little like luggage thingy. Oh, yeah, the luggage, luggage holder thingy, yeah. With, with my suitcase on top of it, and I would like barricade the the door so no one could get in. And I wasn't about it wasn't my fear of like you know strangers walking into the hotel. It was the fact just the fear that there are strange men working in this hotel um, that I don't know who have access to my room. Um, yeah. And it's not just me who, like, I, like, a bunch of my other, like, female friends do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, we all, like, if we're, like, walking to our car by ourselves, we all do, like, the Wolverine key thing where we put our keys to our fingers. Oh, yeah. Um, like, and I've kind of, and I, it's not that I, like, I actively think that, you know, oh, I'm going to be attacked, this is going to happen. I just yeah. automatically do these things for my own safety. Because yeah. really, um, like, and, like, only recently have I started to think about how profoundly, Fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> that is. That yeah, I live in a society where I am literally yeah. barricading my hotel room door because I'm I don't trust the people that are there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. like, and, like I'll I'll request a door that's like a, a hotel room that's closer to the elevator, so I'm not in like a corner where no one can hear me screaming. Oh, yeah. Um, like I have like all these like little things that I've like learned. Like other women, like a lot of other women have told me these tips. So like you know like people that travel. Like one woman told me. When you fill out that little breakfast card for your like hotel room door, never write that you have like one person staying with you. Um, like that it's just like one like just you there. Like always say there are two people. Um, like little thing like little like, you know, survival tips that like were never like 
done as like, oh, you know, like you're, you're going to be in danger. It was just like, oh, you know, like when you go to your hotel, you'll do this. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I think it's like very much, it's like nearly impossible to be a woman today um, yeah. and like not notice those things or be programmed with those things or be scared to, you know, I mean, that, like I actually like, you know, walking alone at night in like a park. Like I, like I can't like get the what ifs out of my head. Um, yeah. So I think it's not just about us as women taking a stand, but it also has to be about men um, changing things. Um, you know, like, I mean, they like, I mean, like women can be violent against other women, um, but mm -hmm. it's also you know the the male perception of things, the victim blaming. Oh like, yeah, oh yeah. That is like absolute bullshit. Um, and there yeah. needs to be some, you know, like it's like telling girls how to avoid being raped. Um, yeah. Don't tell them how to like you know don't just tell them how to avoid being raped. Tell men how to not rape women. Yeah. Like, exactly. like, 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 to be the rapist. Exactly. Like that. Um, so right. Not, like, give them the same disgust, like, like towards rape that they have towards. I saw something on Tumblr. It was like, you know, teach men the same disgust towards rape that they have towards cannibalism. Like, that's what it should be like. Which, like, that's yeah, extreme. But I, I agree. Um, so you know, other authors, I think, by participating in stuff like this, um, that that's great. But it also, you know. There's, there's got to be the women. Us women can only take it so far. We got the yeah. other. Gotta we need everybody's help. Out, yeah. Yeah, it's group effort. So the last uh, discussion question we have, just to wrap up this part, and then we're gonna move on to just the reader questions. And that is, you have been very, um, very supportive of the Read for Pixels campaign and our anti-violence against women work as a whole. Why do you support the cause to end violence against women? I mean. I honestly find it absolutely absurd and disgusting that in today's day and age um, there is still violence against women, um, yeah. like, I mean, and violence against children, against, I mean, against anyone. Um, I mean, that is something, and then, like, I understand the cycles of abuse and, and things like that that are so hard to break out of, um, but, I mean, the fact that we're here supporting an organization that wants to end violence against women is why I support it, because it shouldn't be going on any longer. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's it's, it's ridiculous that, that we still have to, to deal with it. Um, but, you know, ama amazing organizations like this, I mean, they're, they're changing the world, um, you know, even one, one person at a time. Um, and it just, I mean, my, my hat's off to you guys, because um, you know, I, I write about heroes, but, like, you know, organizations like this, all, like you, you guys are the real heroes. Like, like seriously. Um, Definitely, I totally agree with you on all those. Like, they are really the real heroes. Without them, so many things would not be possible that are possible today because of their cause and their efforts to prevent these heinous acts of violence against anybody. Like you said, like women, men, children, um, elderly. Like, it just needs to be ended. And because they're reaper pixels, it can be, and there is that possibility. Um, so now we're going to go jump into the fan questions. Oh, no. um, so, oh okay. <laughs> my, just, like, my friend's like on Twitter and she's like, uh, me. okay, okay, do you know, um, a fuck, Mary kill? Yeah. Okay. So sh this is a really hard one for you <laughs> that I, you may not be able to answer, but okay. So who would you choose? Um, to, um, fuck, Mary kill, Ra Rowan, Dorian, or KL? Oh my god! This is like, I wouldn't choose this. I don't know how you would be able to choose it. Okay, because like, just disclaimer. Just because I pick these characters doesn't necessarily like reflect on the like the books. Like this is me as a woman. Yeah. Uh, oh my god! How can I kill any of these men? I love them. How about we do like, um, oh wait, I don't like the kill choices. I like no. This like. Or like maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, how about friend zone? Friend zone, Mary. Okay. 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 I like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I would marry Rowan, despite like his um, shaky start with Selena. Like, I'm obsessed with Rowan in the same way that I'm like obsessed with Jamie. And I actually imagine Rowan as like Sam, like that, that actor. Yeah. Like, and he like, does his hair and makeup differently. Um, Obviously, like he needs like the silver hair and the tattoos, but like that's how I see him. So like that is my level of like obsession with this man. Oh, um, it's not obsession, it's dedication. 
that's what I always say. Like, it's not an obsession, guys. You're just dedicated. So I would marry Rowan. Um, because he's just, he's so, like, loyal and, like, hot and, like, he's a warrior and so hot. Oh, my God. All right. I've, like, never fangirled over one of my characters before, which is, like, really weird. This is, like, a new time story. for everything. Um, and then I would, I'm, like, I can't even, like, say, I, I can't even say it because it feels so weird because, like, I normally don't, like, crush on my yeah. characters. Um, yeah. But I would, I guess, like, hook up or fuck. It's so vulgar. I would hook up. I know, right? I would hook up with Dorian because, like, he's really skilled in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. My literally hurts. Like, he's a player, so he knows what he's doing. My teeth um, are hurting. I'm smiling so much. No, like, it's literally, like, right here. It's, like, yeah, it's, like, right here. Um, so I would get with Dorian. He would be yeah. good for the one-night stand because he's also, like, so, like, no strings attached. Oh, yeah. Like, right. Like, we're up. We're done. This was fun, but, like, see ya. Um, and then Kale, I would like a friend zone because he's like. I but don't, he would be a good friend. I think Kale would find me so ridiculous as a person that like he like I would just be like mm, no like I'm not into like like Kale would be like you're very bizarre and lazy. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> They'd be like all right whatever like you're too like gruff and serious anyway. I'm gonna oh, be yeah. very Rowan like. <laughs> I love that, though. I love that. He would make you, like, go on a, um, the runs he take takes Selena oh on. Like, if he was like, let's go for a run, I'd be like, this isn't gonna work out. No. He would carry me on the run. Like, I'm totally okay with that. Just no running. <laughs> yeah, like, piggyback me. That's fine. But, like, no. And he, like, he would be disgusted by, like, my TV watching. Like, he would just, it would not work. Like, whereas, like, I think Dorian would be like, oh, let's watch Netflix all day. That sounds cool. And, like, Rowan would probably be, like, this is so stupid, but then Rowan would, like, sit on the couch with you, like, the whole day. And, like, oh, yeah. be obsessed with the TV show, like, to the point where he'd, like, read spoilers ahead of time and then, like, know what's coming. Like, you know when you went on, like, Wikipedia to read the I do that. The wiki of, I do that with Merlin. You know yeah. Merlin? I always have the scary movies where I'm like, I need to know who dies. Yeah, and who I dies. do that all the time because I don't want to be, like, attached to a character all of a sudden and they get killed. Like, I no one's really scared. Like, I want to know when, like, the demon's going to come out of, like, yeah. the box and, like, eat everyone's faces. Like, I want to know. know. Right? I, I don't want to, like, be surprised. It's so yeah, bad. I don't, I don't handle, like, horror surprises. No. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay, so um, taking a question from the question bar to the right of us. Um, the question is, uh, did you, okay, did, wait, what's the question? Okay. What? Oh, it is from um, Meg Garcia, this question. And she said, did you have another name in mind for Selena, or was that your first choice? Uh, that was my first choice. Um, Selena's name is kind of like this weird thing where, I love Greek mythology, and I love The Last Unicorn, um, which is, like, one of my favorite movies and books ever. Um, and when I came up with the idea for Selena, I wanted, like, kind of, like, a cool name for an assassin that meant something neat. Um, and in Greek mythology and in The Last Unicorn, there's this harpy named Seleno, um, and I'd always thought that was a really cool name. And so I looked into the history of that name, on a whim, and Seleno means dark one, and I thought, how perfect for an assassin. Um, but then being, like, 16 and, like, a real, like, piece of work, I was like, but it sounds so manly with an O on the end. I'm just going to swap the O for an A because I'm so creative. Oh, um, my gosh. So, like, that's how I got her name. Um, but then, like, years and years later, um, I was just, like, looking into Seleno's, like, history um, again, for, like, fun to just, like, see if there's anything I could, like, add to the series as, like, a little nod to her. Um, and I, like, literally flipped out because when I was, like, reading more about, like, her name, her name history, it meant Dark One. Um, but then another one of her names was Fleetfoot, which is the name of Selena's dog, which yeah. I did not know when I named Fleetfoot Fleetfoot. So I just thought it was really effing weird. Um, I just, like, I had jumped out of my seat and I was like, what's yeah. happening? The universe is magic. <laughs> Everything's magic. I don't understand. That's so uh, crazy, though. Yeah, so Selena's been Selena since uh, day one, pretty much. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Somebody just asked, says, um, is it bad that I used to edit in class? I don't think it's bad that you used no. to edit. Oh, my God. As someone who edited in class, no. Um, I graduated at the top of my class in college, um, and I still managed to, like, not work in class. Yeah. Like, I just, like, you, like, find a way to, like, I shouldn't be telling you, like, my, like, Sarah's tips. 
for like getting around. <laughs> you don't do stuff during class that you're not supposed to do, but you do it anyways. <laughs> well, you know, like you like you start being able to pick out like what's important that like the professor says, and then you like are able to regurgitate that in like papers and on your tests. Oh. <laughs> like, I love that. Like, like school was like 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 school was easy like like yeah. English stuff was easy for me because like I was able to read a book really quickly like, I could like skim pages and just pick out the yeah. things which like it was not reading for pleasure um, so I've actually like when I do school visits I tell the kids look like when I was in school I hated the books I read yeah oh my I hate them and I'm a reader <laughs> I feel like oh like Animal Farm I'm excited to read this it's about like talking animals and I was like no this sucks this book sucks like this is like yeah. depressing like where's, do where's the magic like yeah. So, like, I really wasn't into the books that I read, and I, I like to tell kids that, you know, school almost crushed my love of reading, actually, where, like, I, like, I, I had professors telling me that, you know, fantasy books weren't real books, um, like, it just was, like, really, like, and I was embarrassed to say what kind of books I read, um, and I was so busy with, like, class that, like, I yeah. never had time to read anyway, so it actually wasn't until, like, I stopped reading you know, my, my freshman year of college, I just, like, stopped having time to read, um, like, outside of summer, um, and then it wasn't until I graduated from college when I, like, I finally had time, yeah. right when YA was taking off again, this was in 2008, um, when YA was starting to take off, um, and then, like, I became a big reader again, and I rediscovered my love of reading, but... Oh, that's so that's great, though. My love of reading. Yeah, um, oh my gosh. Oh, it's so hard to read. Like, it's so difficult to read. Like, I'm currently looking into colleges, and I have to do the college stuff in, like, in the time that I usually do re reading. So it's like, mm -hmm. I really had to, like, prioritize my time now, and I'm like, this is not okay, but I have to do it anyways. Like, uh, my reading is wonderful. I mm -hmm. squeeze in time. I take time out of my sleeping schedule, I can tell people. <laughs> um, so there's this question that um, I actually really like. Um, so if you know what this answer is, if you will be willing to answer it, it's about book four, but it's from Tessa Graying on Twitter, and she asks, are um, there going to be any new points of views in book four? Um, hmm. Yes and no. Um, there are new characters being introduced, um, and they do get scenes from their point of view, but it's not a narrative in the way that like Manon being a new character in Air of Fire had her own narrative. Um, mm -hmm. These characters are already attached to the current narrative so you oh, might yeah. have a couple scenes like that are you know from this new character's point of view yeah. um, but they don't have like a giant arc. Yeah. Um, I kind of just have them in these scenes like you know when a scene's from their point of view it's because it's important to have their point of view. Um, but yeah, so so there will be new new characters and like kind of new point of views, but there won't be like giant arcs. That's so exciting, though. Oh my yeah, god, I'm really excited for you guys. Like, there's one. Um, it's like so spoilery. Like, there's one character that yeah. like like she's like she was a character in the novellas, um, like very like briefly mentioned. Um, that's coming back, and like I'm obsessed with her. Um, and like I feel like in some ways she's actually probably the most like me as a person, um, which is weird because like when yeah. you're they'll be like, are you a prostitute? Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or am I? Ooh, you know. I'm a secret night walker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm really excited for her to like be a part of the next book. Um, yeah. She was one of the fun parts, writing it. Um, but now, now I'm revising book four, and I'm like, I hate every single word of this book. Like, why did I write it? Writing's like constant torture. Fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's why like, I I want I have an idea for a book to write, but then I'm like, it's gonna be torture for me to write it or something. And I'm like, uh, maybe, maybe not. I'll just wait a few years, then come back to it. You um, like, there's no like you should. I mean, like if you don't feel like writing it right now, then you don't need to. Like there's no expiration uh, date on like your talent or on your uh, ideas. So right away you feel like it's the right time, which will probably be once I graduate college. But who knows? I know. Like maybe you'll wake up one day and be like, oh shit, I gotta write this story. I know. I have to like write it down, put it on paper. So for all you aspiring writers out there. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do about one more question and then we're gonna wrap it up so you can get to the Maze Runner. I'm so jealous you're going tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm going to see a movie. I'm going to see the Maze Runner. I'm gonna support YA. Yeah. Also support my love of Dylan O'Brien. Like Dylan. Aww. Oh my gosh, are you wearing your um Dylan O'Brien shirt or sweatshirt? 
Oh my god, I didn't even think about that, but now I was gonna wear my I'm wearing my Sailor Moon t-shirt right now, which says all mega trash must die. Oh my gosh, I love totally that. Totally appropriate to wear like out in the street. People are always like, Are you in a gang? Um no. I'm in the Sailor Moon gang. Hello. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> so I might like actually like double up my fandoms and wear Sailor Moon t shirt and then my Teen Wolf Solinsky sweatshirt. That's amazing. That like, so, um, like, I can't tell my husband because he'll be like, you're such a nerd. Like, like he'll be so embarrassed to be seen with me. But like, I hope, like other fans are like, I see the sweatshirt and I like it. I like it. I like, like it. Why are people smiling at you? I'll be like, because I'm so cool and awesome. And cool, like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, that's totally awesome. I totally vote for you to wear it tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be my – meanwhile, like, no one will probably, like, recognize the sweatshirt. Like, I'm going to, like, a 10, 15 showing, so everyone yeah. will be, like, an adult who doesn't even care. Um, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to try to catch, like, a midnight showing tonight because I just really want to see it. So, um, let me try to find a question. Uh, my friend over here is, like, getting the Twitter questions. Are they? Me to, yeah, she's one. trying to get another question because um, <laughs> there's some really good questions here. One of them is, like, do you have a, a release date for book four? Uh, it'll be out next fall, 2015. Ooh, and is there a title yet? Um, you don't have to say it, but do you have one of mine? I have a title that I love that I'm waiting yeah. to hear if that's the official title. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, well, I cannot wait to hear what it is when it comes and being is released. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. So thank you, Jackie. Jackie is, like, my um, Twitter person. My helper, yeah. She's Sarah White for this this chat. Yeah, she's like, hello. <laughs> um. Okay, so this is from Quest for Awesome, and she asks, "How many times has the ending of Thro of the Throne of Glass series changed for you?" Um, a bunch, like literally, <laughs> like a dozen times. Yeah, um, I, um, I do like I have an ending in mind now um, that I am like happy with. Like I, I, I love that. Um, but, like, getting to that point, um, I actually have no idea, like, how they're going to get there. I only know they need to get there. Um, oh, yeah. I like to listen to, like, what my characters, like, want to do. Um, and, like, Selena's actions have actually changed, like, the course of the series in a bunch of ways. And sometimes new characters will walk onto the page. Um, like, in The Assassin and the Healer, um, Irene, um, the, the healer that Selena meets, she walked onto the page and changed the course of the series. Uh, oh, my gosh. So she, like, I mean, so she comes back um, later. I mean, everything in the novellas is there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but, like, sometimes, like, those reasons will change. Like, a Ansel from The Assassin in the Desert, she comes back. She was another character that just walked onto the page again and was like, mm, your, your arc that you imagine is going to be a little different. Um, so the ending's changed a bunch. Um, yeah. It could still change, but I finally, like, decided, like, you know, who Selena will be with or not be with at the end, and, like, I'm really excited about it, um, but we'll see. Maybe, like, yeah. Selena will, like, decide, mm, no, 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 that won't work. This yeah. is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, now I had to put up some slides on the screen, so bear with me on this. I'm so bad at, like, doing the technical stuff with this. Usually my friends do it for me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try to find... Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I think I got some of the stuff. Okay, slide. Let's see if this does anything. Um, oh gosh, I'm so bad. Okay, um, which slide is this? Okay, so we're just gonna do the exit intro thingy. Well, it's not really an intro if it's an exit one, but okay. So, um, okay, let me see. So, um, if you guys are willing to donate to the Reefer Pixels cause, please do. It's an amazing cause for ama such an amazing, like, it's just amazing. Just period amazing. Um, so, it's an amazing cause ever. I know. It's just amazing. That's, like, the word that should be given for this because oh. it's just, it helps so many people and so many just... It changes people's lives, and that's why. That should be a reason enough to donate. Um, so, you can donate and get goodies. Like, um, there's, like, live... Uh, there's Skype calls with, like, Sarah J. Moss, and there's tons of other authors who have donated goodies, so go check it out. The links are below. So if you um, only have PayPal and no credit card, you can donate um, to the link that is below. It's for Razoo. And you can um, get a, an exclusive 100-word short stories from um, Guy Gravel K, um, Kevin Herney, 
Ern and Delilah S. Dawson there. If you want to learn more about the Read for Pixels, go to uh, the Read for Pixels website. And to find out more about violence against women and what you can do um, to prevent it, visit the Pixel Projects website at thepixelproject.net. And once again, you can find more about the celebrity uh, male role model um, reveal campaign. Uh, please visit more links down below, and it's called reveal.thepixelproject.net to learn more about it. And please donate generously uh, to help us reveal pixels and raise $1 million for the cause. Okay, and one more. Um, okay, so there's going to be one more slide. I'm trying to do this. Okay. Um, second slide. I just learned this yesterday. I'm quite proud. Um, okay. So, um, thank you everybody who has um, joined us today for the live show. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, hope you have a good day or good night wherever you are in the world. So, thank you so much, Sarah, for being here, and thank you all for tuning in. Oh my God, thanks, so thanks for having me, and thank you, audience that I can't see, for being a part of our like totally awesome hangout. I know, oh my gosh, and probably, hopefully in the future, we'll have a hangout where we just talk about Jamie, because that would take up a whole entire hangout session. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you all for watching, and make sure you go check out Sarah's books if you have not already, but I bet you have if you're tuning in, and Sarah's new book, which is Air of Fire, is now at store, so go pick it up. Oh, and thanks for the plug! That was so nice! <laughs> go get it! Oh, I love this cover. So thank you all for being here, and have a nice night or day. Thanks, guys.